Welcome to Taiwan Talks, covering the latest global news from a Taiwan perspective. I'm Albert Cho. Ever since President Trump positioned the concept of the Indo-Pacific at the forefront of U.S. foreign policy, Taiwan has emerged as a vital element. Both the U.S. and China vie to influence Taiwan in the bid for global leadership. Joining us today are Yan Zhengshen, Professor of Political Science at the National Zhengzheng University. He's also a Taiwan-U.S. relations expert and Li Tingshen, Deputy CEO at Institutes of National Defense and Security Research, and a former Deputy Commanding General of the ROC Air Force. Very warm welcome to both on the show. Okay, mm -hmm. Professor Yen, um, uh, let's start with the military perspective. Can you uh, provide an overview of the military capabilities, including Army, Navy, Air Force, missiles uh, of each nation in East Asia? You, you can uh, raise a, a couple of them uh, as a start, especially regarding their potential to assist the U.S. in containing China. Well, I think you know the overall U.S. strategy is to have regional countries serving uh, for its interests of balancing China. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be directly involved. So of course, U.S. would like to see, for example, Korea, Japan, and even Taiwan or Philippines. And recently, we see uh, President Biden visiting Vietnam uh, to provide some kind of, at least, uh, a deterrence against China. If not enough, then U.S. will come to join this side. Uh, a, a little bit like Great Britain in the 19th century, uh, we call it the glorious isolation, even though Great Britain is not really truly isolated. But any kind of uh, balance of power within Europe, like between Prussia and France, uh, which side is you know, in an advantage position, then Great Britain will try to balance it. So I, it's a little bit different, but I think United States know so far the, you know, with Japan I increasing its military budget uh, to meet the demand of the U.S. And South Korea also uh, is willing to uh, have a closer relation with the United States and somehow make up the relation with Japan. We know U.S. Japan have a bilateral security tie. U.S. and Korea has a bilateral security tie. But Korea and Japan doesn't have a particular treaty uh, so U.S. is almost like uh, the connecting points for all this East, uh, East Asia or Southeast Asia ally to contain China. Uh, most of the country are trying to do a little bit more as what being requested by the U.S. But still, overall, uh, they will have to consider uh, their trade relation with China, but also they don't simply cannot adding together probably will not be able to deter China by their own. So U.S. will play a balanced uh, role here. Okay, General Li, uh, you, are, uh, you served as a general uh, in the military. Uh, would you kind of still kind of deepen the conversation uh, just started by Professor Yen about the military perspective of these uh, East Asian countries? Area. So mm -hmm. from the military perspective, to evaluate the military power in different countries, first of all, you should evaluate the a threat from different countries. This is very important. Just mm. like the North Korea, uh, they are threat to South Korea. So Japan is also have the three mm. nuclear power threat, just like the North Korea, Russia, and China. And Taiwan is threat by the uh, CCP. And the uh, Philippines also have the threat by any party involved in their uh, uh, state interest in, in South China Sea. So first of all, you want to evaluate threat. Who is your threat? Second, how to evaluate your uh, military power should be under, have three points. First of all is the, your national defense budget. Second is the, your technology. Third is your mindset. So just like uh, Indian and their the defense budget 2023 is the mo more than 2.4. And South Korea is the 2.8. Japan is the, because the Japan GDP is a huge. So their GDP 1.1, uh, Defense budget is very big, but Taiwan is very important. Taiwan uh, in next year, 2024, our budget is rising to the 2.5. This is determination Taiwan have the capability to defense uh, CCP ag aggression. The, uh, according to the global file power from 2023, Indian, South Korea, and Japan military power is top 10 
in all around the world. But Taiwan is also very good. Indian and South Korea, their ground force is very good. But Japan is the uh, I, uh, ocean island, so it ocean country. So their surface and under surface water, the, the defense, uh, the military power is very good. Taiwan, the surface to surface, surface to air, and air to air, air to surface missile is very good. Mm -hmm. So we are proud of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think that's very uh, specific and also mm -hmm. clear to kind of let our international mm -hmm. audience and also audience in Taiwan to understand what we can do uh, as a Taiwan, uh, Taiwan's military. But also I would like to move on to a strategic mm -hmm. uh, dimension, which is the uh, island chain theory. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a closer look at the concept of the first, second, and third island chains. In Northeast Asia, we find Japan and Korea, while the Philippines is situated in Southeast Asia along the first island chain. While India may not align precisely with these island chains, its geographical location in Southeast Asia makes it inevitably intertwined in the competition with China. Okay, so maybe for Professor Yen, mm -hmm. uh, uh, politically speaking, what makes Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Philippines, and India? Uh, in, there are a lot of countries out there, but you, you can just pick a, a, a couple of, uh, you know, to comment first. Yeah. What, what, what makes them uh, significant? Okay, first, uh, since the end of World War II, mm -hmm. when the U.S. foreign policy, the most important strategy uh, was to basically contain communism at the time. So you have the first island chain, uh, including South Korea, Japan, Taiwan and the Philippines as a containment, mm -hmm. part of the containment. Uh, but this containment uh, gradually kind of uh, uh, eased in the 1980s and 1990. But gradually, the uh, U.S. is coming back to face the China threat. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, from we call uh, a period of engagement uh, become engagement. Mm -hmm. I think right now it's more <coughs> containment uh, than ever. Uh, so, so this is an important uh, part of the U.S. strategy is to see that China will not be able to easily, uh, their naval force will go, th you know, go through the first ch island chain and then into the second island chain and maybe break the in containment. So uh, China probably will not be able to do anything in Korea, in Japan or the Philippines. So Taiwan became the most important part of this island <coughs> chain. That if China broke through here, then the overall containment strategy, you know, will suffer a setback. Now, okay, that's the reason I think Taiwan, you know, back way back in the 1950, uh, we call ourselves unsinkable aircraft carrier. <laughs> and that is still the same thing today. Yeah. You know, you, you, something didn't change at all. Like, you know, some of, sometimes we talk about uh, Turkey control the, 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 the two straits, right, from, you know, Black Sea into the Mediterranean Sea. Still today, that's the important part. The same thing with Taiwan. When we control the Taiwan Strait, when we control the middle part, the connecting part <laughs> from Northeast Asia to Southeast Asia, uh, part of this island chain uh, uh, of this uh, containment policy. So we are in a very important position that uh, people will value that our position in the overall strategy of containment. General Lee, um, when we talk about the first island chain theory, uh, some people would argue that's purely from American perspective. So <laughs> would you say uh, the island chain theory is also crucial uh, to the uh, survival or even the safety of countries like, for example, South Korea, Japan, mm. the Philippines, even India? What's uh, your just take like on I this? mentioned threat. Who is your threat, right? Mm -hmm. So your definition of threat, you will prepare your military power to against them, deter them to threat your country. So just like I, I, I mentioned about the free, open Indo-Pacific strategy, so first island chain from North South Korea, mm -hmm. Japan, Taiwan, Philippines, and to the Indian. But this three island chain, first island chain country is the West Pacific. But Indian is the West, is the Indian Ocean. But linked together is broad view. See, this is the Indo-Pacific strategy. So to definition, who is your target? Who is your enemy? Who is your threat? You should understand to play the strategy, just like um, one month ago, South Korea, Japan, and United States, they have the triangle strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And this month, the Vietnam, Philippines, and United States have the uh, triangle strategy. So, but north of the Asia and south of Asia have the two triangle. 
this is very important in first island chain. Mm. So who know in the first uh, the first island chain knows South Korea, Japan, and United States is the uh, east of China Sea and Sea of the Jap uh, Japan Sea, and South China Sea is the Vietnam, Philippines, and United States. Mm -hmm. So big first island chain each other protect their own and continue to against the uh, authoritarian region aggression. So this is very important for First Island and all the country. Okay, uh, so that, that would make sense in the sense that uh, if for each country to uh, deploy its uh, military preparation. Mm. So I know this question kind of followed up for General <laughs> Lee as well. It's kind of tough, but c could you shed some light on uh, each country's defense policies uh, you know, regarding those countries we just mentioned and the strength and weakness of, of them? Yeah. So you want to know who uh, strengthen and uh, weakness you should understand and United States is superpower. Mm -hmm. The uh, CCP is rising power in the great power. So first island chain cooperation just like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and Philippines to extension to Indian Ocean, Indian. So this is to have the uh, couple of the meaningful. First of all is the alliance cooperation, deterrence. So just like we mentioned is collective defense, not only one country. If the together to defense the authoritarian and region, and cooperation uh, to protect your country well. Second is, I believe, this island chain is the democracy country, right? Democracy country is versus is the authoritarian country and region. The third, I believe, the CCP is a land power move to sea power. How to stop the military expansion? Due to CCP want to expansion to West Pacific, they have the two, two way. One is Miyako Channel, is the north of the Taiwan, south of Japan. Second is the, we call the Passi Channel. Passi Channel is south of the Taiwan and north of Luzon Island. Mm. So this country, island together, work together, is confident to save our country. For on this pers pers perspective, it's geopolitical strategy. So everybody in this first island chain cooperation well, we believe can stop and deter aggression. Okay, uh, Professor Yen, shifting our focus to China, mm. some historians and international scholars believe China's rise is inevitable due to its geopolitical position, even though we talk about the geopolitical importance of other <laughs> countries containing China. Mm. But China itself is important in uh, geography. Can you help our audience understand why this viewpoint is resonating globally? And uh, can you identify China's key uh, geopolitical rivals? Well, I, I think, you know, personally, I think China doesn't have the kind of uh, we call geographical advantage like the U.S. having two oceans on each side and then the north and southern neighbors are pretty friendly and not threatening. China, you know, used to have very tense relations with Russia. China doesn't have a very good relation with India and China traditionally had problems with Japan before. So, so basically, China is besieged in before, but right now with its rising power, and then the Southeast Asian country are trying to maintain a neutral sta status. So China is uh, facing basically uh, the American alliance, but I think there are some loopholes here, because if you look at South Korea, South Korea will always hesitate if Let's say if U.S. and China have a conflict, according to General Lee's uh, idea, we call collective security. You know, one part being a, you know attacked, then Korea should be joining the U.S. side. But you know, Korea also have South Korea also have to worry about North Korea. Would they do something? You know, because you <laughs> you fight against China, China mm -hmm. just ask North Korea to do something. So uh, this is what United States uh, will have to face. Uh, Japan always on U.S. side, but then you know Vietnam right now. You know, Biden is trying to win on to, uh, to its side, having a highest kind of like a relationship. But still, Vietnam, I think, is trying to play a a balance, uh, you know, between the two, playing a neutral position as well. Philippines, I think, is right now uh, very close to the U.S. But you, Philippines and Korea. I think this is what U.S. have to worry about, is they have a lot of elections that will change <laughs> the who is in power, and then that will decide their di direction. Japan, 
Liberal Democratic Party is always in power, mm -hmm. so so it's not going to change that much. Mm -hmm. But United okay. States has to worry about North Korea, uh, South Korea, and the Philippines when they have change of government. All right, uh, I would like to kind of follow up mm -hmm. uh, by asking General Lee and give us a really kind of uh, uh, succinct uh, response. Is that uh, militarily speaking, is it possible for China to rise peacefully from <laughs> a military perspective? I don't think so. China is the peaceful rise due to. China uh, let still have inside have still a, a, a lot of problem. For Taiwan perspective and military perspective, we are is to maintain this uh, area peaceful and stability. But China, their military just like their air force and their warship, navy, more expansion to West Pacific, just like uh, last year, and uh, Speaker uh, Nancy Pelosi mm. visit Taiwan. Right. China launched. Uh, missile hit around Taiwan area. They also have the, a lot of the fighter sortie around Taiwan and mm -hmm. worship. This is coercion and perverted. So Taiwan should be maintained calm and maintained well. But you see the China uh, peaceful rise, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. They will try to use their force to more aggressive to West Pacific. The other country will feel fear. Okay, uh, let's now uh, bring the role of Taiwan into mm. the whole game. Uh, uh, Professor Yan, you go first. Many in the international community suggest that countries like Taiwan and even Japan uh, hold strategic positions within the first island chain. Mm. Do you believe that the island chain theory still holds significance in understanding China and the U.S. objectives? Well, I think, you know, uh, from the Ukraine war, uh, if we mm. learn, and, you know, because there's a lot of comparison about, you know, uh, Taiwan and Ukraine. But don't forget that uh, Ukraine did suffer, but Ukraine withstood uh, Russia's invasion somewhat, even though it lost some parts of its territory. But Taiwan, we do have a Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. Japan do, does have a Japan Sea and East China Sea. So when you are not connected to the other country, there is a natural barrier, mm -hmm. which is difficult. Uh, I think a lot of people argue, and General Lee will be the expert here, uh, Mar you know, uh, any kind of amphibian kind of war will be difficult. So if we uh, forget about all other type of war, if China try to land on Taiwan, that will be a difficult uh, uh, um, operation. I believe the Taiwan, our national defense, defense of Taiwan and my country is almost 74 years. We have the strong confidence to against the China invasion. but. Almost 40, uh, 74 years, uh, the Taiwan and the uh, mainland China distance did not change. But what kind of the change, I believe, is the technology. Mm -hmm. Technology changed everything. Just like in the, in the World War II, you should shoot a lot of the shear mm -hmm. or missile to certain places that can, just can destroy. But now different. Mm -hmm. Our Taiwan have the high-tech technology. Mm -hmm. We develop our own surface-to-surface -surface missile. You shoot this window, will not shoot another window. This is the precise. Taiwan develop defense Precision. ourselves. Mm. Precise, very clear. Mm -hmm. I think the te technology uh, you know, matters a lot in, in, in terms of, especially we see the artificial mm. intelligence come mm. in, comes into play. Yeah. Uh, this, this might be a little bit uh, far-fetched, but a lot of people argue that maybe war in the future is not human beings against human beings, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but it's ro you know, robots against robots. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, generally, uh, another follow-up is that um, uh, from a military perspective, beyond the island chain theory, are there alternative perspectives to grasp, grasp the geopolitical importance of Taiwan? So this is a very good question. Mm -hmm. Due to Taiwan is a very important position, just like you mentioned, we are in the center of the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean, we are in the middle. Mm. And the Asia, North Asia and South Asia, Taiwan is the middle. So according to 2022 surveyor, most almost 60 percent of the shipping and cargo around Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. This is economy first. Second is the semiconductor chips. Almost 70 percent is the semiconductor from Taiwan. More advanced is sophisticated is the more 92 percent from Taiwan semiconductor chip. One more is the subsea cable. Mm -hmm. So subsea cable mm -hmm. is link Taiwan to North, to North is to Japan, South Korea, South Philippines, and South Asia, Asia. Taiwan is in this position is very important. So another one, just I mentioned before, is the 
value, democracy country, our system and value. I believe that in this area, Taiwan is good mirror for CCP. Yeah. For them see, Taiwan is the uh, democracy country. Taiwan is freedom and prosperity. Mm -hmm. Okay, now kind of let's come mm -hmm. back to the policy mm -hmm. domain a bit, uh, Professor Yuan. Um, so uh, it's widely believed that China or mainland China mm -hmm. to be neutral is Taiwan's primary threat. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, eva evaluate the appropriateness mm -hmm. of Taiwan's current defense strategy? Do you think anything that we need to kind of work on? Well, I think, you know, uh, of course, uh, by Taiwan's uh, only defense spending or by the size of our military, we might not be able to defeat or deter China by ourselves. So we need some kind of help, especially from the US. So the most important thing for our policy is to make sure that the US feel that Taiwan is fighting the hell for our own defense. And so the defense spending here, uh, the kind of uh, we call uh, the uh, compulsory military service, expen uh, you know, expansion from four months to a year, maybe to two years. In other words, we have to show our determination that we have a strong willingness to defend ourselves by spending enough for defense budget and, you know, in the allocating enough for defense budget and also uh, recruiting enough soldiers. And then most importantly, also, we have a, a, a kind of like a civilian type of training mm. uh, reserve that are ready. In other words, you have to show uh, other country that you are willing and also you have a strong determination mm. to defend yourself. Then other country will help you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, generally, as a military expert, uh, what exactly you know we heard a lot about this so-called porcupine strategy. <laughs> and uh, a follow-up question to that is: Should Taiwan consider investing in expensive weapon system from the United States, such as the mid-range missile system? I mean, w what's your suggestion to the, the government? So, in Taiwan, security strategy develops three layer. First layer is the uh, international security strategy. Second layer is the defense strategy. Third is the military strategy. Mm -hmm. So these three layers. Uh, national security uh, strategy developed uh, stay interesting and stay uh, safety and uh, economy, diplomacy and uh, defense a lot. But for the military strategy is the persistent defense and layer deterrence. This is very important now Taiwan military strategy. So you mentioned the porcupine strategy is that we, this couple seven years of six years, we develop our national defense is the four very important perspective. First is the long distance shoot. Second is the precise. Third is the mobile, due to Taiwan should be mobile. Just like we launch the missile, we are mobile to another place. Mm -hmm. The four is the asymmetric. This four is the, uh, we call, you call it a porcupine strategy, mm -hmm. or you call this is the self-defense strategy. Doesn't matter, but Taiwan is especially have the, a lot of the high mountain. So, you know, we have the uh, more than 3,000 high mountain, at least the 200. Mm -hmm. So in this area, we use our Taiwan advantage to protect Taiwan. Most important, we hope to keep the stable, peace, and prosperity in this area. Right, I mean, there was a debate about what kind of weapons we should buy from the United States. Is that that kind of like, you know, systematic, uh, big, gigantic one, or you think it's a portable one, such as the uh, war in Ukraine now that soldiers use there? What kind of the weapon is useful, we need it. Mm -hmm. Any kind of the can protect Taiwan, we need it. Not only in mm -hmm. our, uh, mm -hmm. by the, from the United States, but mm -hmm. also we can uh, sell products Okay. Oh, so we can do that. Okay. All right. Um, so, Professor Yen, mm -hmm. when thinking about national defense, which countries uh, might serve as role models for <laughs> Taiwan? You think Israel, South Korea against North Korea, Iceland, or even uh, what lesson, you know, maybe from the Ukraine? Well, I think, of course, everybody will look at Israel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because Israel, first of all, they have this compulsory military service mm -hmm. for two and a half years for male. And then one year at least, I, I, I forgot the exact number, for female. So even the female, young female, serve in the military. And we have seen the Israel young people uh, 
in the military, how they learn so much that when they learn so much, they came back to, you know, discharge and came back to, to the private sector. Those skills can be transferred, you know, to their private sector work. In Taiwan, I think this is the most important thing is you have to get the young people enrolled in the military and learn the important skill or operation that our private sector, uh, when they ret you know, retire from the military, uh, see seeing them as an asset for the company, mm -hmm. you know, because they have, you know, they must have strong character or other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this will be very important. Mm -hmm. So Israel, uh, I think, is always the model. Okay. Uh, what about you, generally? Any country that uh, before Just us? like Israel sent us the Taiwan. Uh, the, we learn from Israel, I believe, is the... Uh, no matter how threat is, we have determination to against it. But different is the, just like South Korea, their mm. defense education mm. is very well. Mm. So we sh Taiwan should learn. And and Iceland, just like you mentioned, Iceland maybe Coast Guard and all society consensus. Mm. This is we should learn. This three we Taiwan should learn. But actually Taiwan, uh, we seventy years we prepare well. Now we have the four prepare. So for understand we are capability. Okay, that, that helps uh, to understand uh, where we are. Uh, we explore the geopolitical roles of key Asian nations, with Taiwan being a central focus. We also discussed the Taiwan's defense strategies and their uh, suitability in the current global landscape. Did you enjoy this episode? Drop us a comment on our YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe to the Taiwan Talks. Until next time.